Hey guys, it's somewhere late January. I don't know what date is because we've had a couple of snow days. Um, I'm going to go over my inverter generator that I built. Uh, I have this up here because we got a, a lot of snow and I figured if we need power uh, and it takes a while to set up our large generator so I built this little one. Um, this is all made of pretty much scrap parts that I just kind of had lying around with the exception of an alternator, the inverter, and the lights. I built the trailer. It's three 4x4s. Four all lag bolted together and I, I lag bolted a little hitch on the back too so if I want to pull a uh, little portable workbench I built I can bring that as well for gas or just to do some maintenance this thing I'm sorry about the duct tape this gas tank the way it's held on there are these little plastic tabs that go into the shroud for this um, magneto area and uh, I forget what you call this thing the metal piece that spins um, little plastic tabs go into it and those broke off so right now I kind of jerry-rigged it with duct tape. This is actually a 5 horsepower Tecumseh from a power washer and when I got it it wasn't running and basically uh, the carburetor had completely gummed up and the float was bad so whenever I added gas it would just drain right at the bottom of this air cleaner here. So I finally fixed that and got it running. I do have the pull, cold for, pull cord for it but it's kind of a pain to do when it's cold since it's carbureted so I have a drill and that drill can run off the inverter, which I actually don't have attached right now, just because it's not running. Um, this is little instrument panel here. That light signifies if that light, all of these switches go on with the exception of this one, that's only lights. All of these switches go on when it's running, just to um, keep an eye on things. That red light turns on when that isn't producing power, and obviously since it's not on, it's not going to. This switch does a little voltmeter that I got from Harbor Freight. Had to wire it up and everything, which is relatively easy. And this switch excites a Mitsubishi uh, alternator that I've hooked up. So all of these uh, run, um, or all of these are on while it's running. And this controls two things: the Harbor Freight lights, one pointing this way to fill up gas, and the other where the uh, alternate or where the inverter normally goes. So that's just a piece of aluminum I cut with a Dremel, and I had to cut all these little uh, pieces out for each uh, part. It has a cover for all the wiring in case this is out in like a drizzle. And the way I had to build this, I actually had to do three layers, one of half inch plywood, one inch, one of uh, I think quarter inch or eighth inch veneer, and then the aluminum on top. So I have this little guard for the wiring, and it's messy, but it works because I did this thing probably two years ago. And uh, I actually just cleaned up some of the wiring right now. So all of this under here, it, it's safe, it's taped, it just doesn't have like the twist screws or anything that'll keep it. So right here, this is where all of the wiring for the instrument panels and stuff goes. It's actually two door hinges, which I know it's not the safest thing, but like I said, this is made out of scraps. So the power for uh, positive is hooked up right here, and I actually used a bolt in there to get everything tight. These are the two wires that either excite the alternator or uh, will tell if it's running. And then over here, this is just the negative and I just put it in with the original door pin actually. So this is for like lights and then that's the return for lights and so on and so forth. And then they get over to here to the battery. I built it just out of scrap two by four with screws in it. And like I said, I built this probably two years ago. So it's not the best craftsmanship, but I have the wires that go from the alternator to here. And then these wires, if the uh, inverter was attached, it would go right on. I have it clamped so they don't arc. Sorry about that. And this, this is the alternator itself, hooked up positive and negative. There was actual, actually a YouTube video online that really helped me with this, because um, I didn't really know which one was which, and both of these are positive, so it really didn't matter, but I did want to know how to hook it up, and I kind of figured, since this one, this terminal was insulated and this one wasn't, positive and negative, but I just double checked to make sure. So, this is another scrap thing I sort of put together. It's not a sturdy belt guard, but it's something where if you get your hand in here, you're not going to actually hit the uh, hit the belt itself, the metal will, so it's just a little protector piece. And I have a, it was a hundred bucks, and it's a 1500 watt, 3000 peak uh, inverter that I can hook up. So when I need to start this thing, I have a drill with a half inch socket uh, attached to it, and it uses an 11 inch, or an 11 16 inch um, socket on itself to start. So I can just plug it in if the battery's strong, and most of the time it is. Like I said, worse comes worse, I get the pull cord, and everything works. It's a pretty basic setup, 
like I said, it's a couple things from Harbor Fre uh, Freight, some light switches, some old hinges, and these are just uh, aluminum scraps from actually building the garage I'm in right now. This is the guard for the wiring for these lights. If this wasn't here, they'd burn up pretty fast. Uh, you can kind of see the dark spot because I haven't run this thing that much. Or I haven't had the need to, I should say. So I'd clean up a lot of wiring. I had the original um, wire holders. I, these weren't in. They were actually just pieces of scrap metal nailed down. And that just didn't look good at all. So I went back through today. I took all the spare wiring out, cut it, and then re either taped it or just got some electrical connectors and used it. So that's about it. I mean, I used house cord here for positive and negative because it's the best thing that you can get where it's all enclosed and you don't have to worry about the wires tangling. Like I said, it's a five, por four, five horsepower Tecumseh overhead valve. Uh, works pretty well. The car rate is a little bit messy on it, or at least the linkage is. But uh, it, it runs fantastic once you get it going. Can't really stop it. So yeah, that's it. And then eventually I probably will post one with this actually running. Can't run it in the garage right now, but I'll probably hook up the inverter and maybe just show you how to start it with the drill and, you know, just do a bunch of other things with it if you need to.